Hello. Today I'm actually going to talk about the three commas Binance Trader or 3CBT. In this video I'm going to go through how to set up this bot for a coin that will trade on signals from TradingView. I'm going to be using Jackrabbit TV as the basis of my example. But before we even get to that point, comma, the bot itself needs to be established. This is my dashboard and establishing a new bot is very easy. We start here and we create bot. I'm going to walk through some of these options along the way, along with a few tips and strategies to help make this process a little bit easier as you are working. Okay, here we go, the basic settings. First of all, the name. I recommend you keep the name appropriate and simple to the coin and the strategy. The coin I'm going to be working with is Adam. The strategy, of course, is Jackrabbit. Now we can choose between a simple or composite bot. We always want a composite bot. The reason is, is you want it to be able to use dollar cost averaging or safety orders to be able to mitigate losses and increase the chance of profit. So now our coin choices. I'm going to clear everything out. Okay, now that we've done that, we do not want all coin choices. So we're going to click here. Now with the three commas Binance Trader, you always need to start with your base currency first. Our base currency is US. D T. So let's start by putting that in and we'll begin filtering out the coins until we find the one we want, which is right here. Click on it and now it sets us up as our coin choice. Atom is the coin, USDT is the base currency. Now we want maximum deals of one. That is, this spot will trade one coin at a time. We want a long strategy. And we want all profits to be on the basis of our base currency. So we want to click on base. Now we need to set up our base position size or our base order size. I'm going to choose 11 USDT. Now we start with our safety orders or what we start with our dollar cost average at the first level. 
I went to start this also at $11. You can choose higher. For example, you can choose your starting DCA at $33. I personally don't recommend that. I personally recommend staying with these levels as a convenient, easy way to determine your budget. Now, we have the choice between using either limit orders or market orders. With the Jackrabbit red-green analysis, market orders are the best way to go. So that is what I'm going to choose. Now, we need to tell the bot exactly where the signals are coming in. For that, we want a trading view custom signal. Okay, here is where we set our profits. Our take profit or trailing stop loss. Very simple, very basic. I want it to start trailing at break even. Break even is 0.2%. This is how you determine your profit for on the basis of whether or not dollar cost averaging or safety orders are applied. I recommend leaving this as it is. Your trailing factor. This is how you trail your profits. I recommend a very simple start, something that will trigger quickly and easily in the market conditions, but still provide reasonable profits. So I'm going to go with a 0.03% trailing, or a retracement value. Of course, you can set up a stop loss if you want. But I want to go strictly to the part that covers dollar cost averaging or what they call here safety orders. Now for this spot I want a hundred dollar budget. My original position is going to be eleven dollars so I want seven safety orders or seven layers of dollar cost averaging. Now I only want one safety order at a time. So as you can see here, right now, my bot will use $89. The original $11 and then reserves the remaining for the safety orders or dollar cost averaging. I want it to add to my order every time the asset drops below 1%. Scaling. This is where you can choose if you want to double down, triple down, so forth. I simply want to use a one-to-one -one scaling to maintain a consistent budget. That being said, the advanced settings we don't need to worry about. Here is something we do need to worry about, and that is simultaneous deals. Well, basically what this is telling you is, this is telling us that we want the dollar cost averaging to only be one time or seven different orders. We don't want that. We want one position, one coin for this bot. 
So we want to set up our simultaneous steals as the same as our original safety order number. We want these to match. That way when we get our safety orders, and I'll show you this in my results, the safety orders will be applied to the same position that we already have open. It won't open any additional positions. So, now let's double check everything. As you can see, very simple, very basic. A lot of stuff we don't need to deal with. We can, if we want to, and we can always go back and edit this information. But that's not something of real interest for us at this point. This is just a very simple, easy to maintain bot. Okay, there we go. All nice and set. Now this tells us what our current balance is. This tells us what our maximum reserved amount is going to be for this bot. This bot is going to use $89. The original order and then the additional safety orders. The amount you choose for your loss needs to be evaluated on the basis of the coin itself and your own risk assessment. Once you have double checked all of your figures and made sure that everything is the way you want it, simply click on create bot. And now you will want to start your bot. Your bot is now ready to trade. It will not trade yet, as we need to actually go through trading view and establish the signals. This page lists an overview of your settings, kind of a last check before you move to the next stage. Now at the bottom of this page, are the secret messages that you need to give TradingView. Do not give these out to anybody because they contain the information necessary for somebody to actually take control of your bot. But from the standpoint of how to get this information into TradingView, you simply click on it and it copies the information into your buffer. You can now then go to Trading View, which I have the chart already loaded. And once it loads, you will actually be able to establish your buy alert according to what you just set up. And you'll see here the alerts button once the chart has fully loaded. It should be noted that once in a while you will need to reload the screen if it has been setting for longer than a few minutes. To have it reload the chart appropriately. It does require a device with a significant amount of CPU power or simply patience, as in the case of my device.
from the standpoint of this example, I am not going to use a sell signal, only a buy signal, and let the bot use the trailing take profit to give me my profits. Chart is slowly loading. Jackrabbit is mathematically intensive, so it will take older devices a little bit of time to load all of the necessary information available. Now that it is loaded, here you see we have the alert mechanism. We're going to create the Jackrabbit alert for the three commas bot we just made. Click on alert. And we are presented with this screen. We want to take the coin, click on it, go to Jackrabbit. Now these are the current settings that Jackrabbit is using. Open price, heavy risk mitigation, red green analysis, and enforcing condition zero. Make sure these are what you want before you actually continue to create this alert. We want to click on Jackrabbit. This screen is going to turn and now we want to tell it to buy only when there are two signals and to do so once per bar or once per candlestick. Now, unless you have the premium subscription, your actual alert will only last for 60 days. Okay, this is the webhook address you need to use. I'll be sure to put a link of this in the article that attaches to this video. This is standard and universal. It's not custom built per bot. That's why you need to protect your message alerts as much as possible. Now for the message body. Let's get rid of this. And now we're going to paste the message we got off of the bot screen. And there we are. Now I will be deleting this bot afterwards, so the secret information revealed here will be of no value. But this demonstration shows you how to accomplish this. Now we simply create it. And that's it. We now have a working Trading view signal for the Atom coin. And we can scale back on the chart and see when the last buy signal was. Let's see if we can trace the last buy signal. Most of my buy signals were around January 2nd or 3rd. So we'll see if this one follows suit. You can see though, looking from the 5th to the 9th, how the prices have dropped, but have had peaks. Looking at the chart on the right hand side, you can see the price drop. If we click here, and then click on percent. Now we can see how much the percentage of pricing dropped. So every single percent is a safety order 
or a dollar cost average. That's important to look at when you plan out your coins. That way you can make sure you have the right amount of funds to handle the coin going to its worst case scenario and then you being able to profit from it. And it looks like starting on the 5th is when it started trending downwards. Okay, getting closer to the 2nd. Ah yes, we have a buy signal. Right here, two indicators indicated a good spot to buy. Roughly at the 5% underwater level. So based upon our take profit, we would have had one safety order and then we would have sold with a profit up in here. So before it ever got to this downtrend, this coin would have made a profit because of the heavy mitigations engines analysis. So now let's clear this out and go back to three commas, to the 3C exchange. Let's go to the bots page. And this is why you will see the importance of a naming nomenclature for your bots. Of course, you'll see my profits as well that I've made since I've actually started this bot and my losses. Okay, so here we go. Everything before December 23rd was different strategies other than Jackrabbit TV. All of this is because of Jackrabbit TV and a lot of luck. Here you see again from the 23rd on various levels of profit. And the coin that I've been trading with that's been progressively doing better. Okay, let's go to all of our enabled bots. And now you see the various names. You see that I'm working with BNB E N J and now Adam. Simple, easy, nothing too difficult. Having the word Jackrabbit in the title, I can easily see the strategy that I am using with this coin. So as you can see, the nomenclature makes it easy at a quick glance to take a look at how well each bot is doing and the settings you are using. Simple, basic, to the point. And that is what you want when you build your bot on 3 commas Binance Trader. Until next time. Oh, wait, before I do, one other thing I want to show you. The deals. The profits or losses. This is probably one of the most important aspects of a successful bot. For you to decide what's actually working and what's not working and needs to either be redone or reanalyzed.
and there will be cases where from time to time each and every coin you trade in will need to be reanalyzed. We don't have any active orders, so we're going to go straight to our history. Now this is going to show all of our trades that have actually completed. It'll either be with a profit or with a loss, and it will tell us the number of safety orders it took to actually make that trade. Remember, a safety order is just another fancy word of saying dollar cost average. Okay, here is the last order. We made four cents. It required no dollar cost averages. It lasted a whole 10 minutes. This one lasted a whole 43 minutes. So as you can see, sometimes you might be in an order for hours, sometimes only minutes. Now I'm finally, I think, at the point to where I can conclude this video, but I wanted to make sure that I covered all the basis of the three commas Binance Trader. Is it better than Crypto Hopper or Apex? Yes and no. Realistically, it's just a different viewpoint of the same piece of pie. They all do the same thing. It's just a matter of how they get it done and whether or not it fits with your own risk assessments. I like three commas Binance Trader because there is no monthly subscription fee. What I don't like about three commas Binance Trader is it's loaded with techno babble like safety orders versus dollar cost averaging or trailing take profit versus the standard nomenclature of a trailing stop loss. It does take a little bit to get used to the different nomenclature, but it does do a very efficient job with the right strategy. So now I'm going to wrap this up, and until next time.